Somerset fought back strongly to restore parity on the penultimate day of their LV County Championship match with Warwickshire and Edgebaston with both George Dockerell and Nick Compton to the fore. Laurie Evans and Atik Javid have put their side in control on the second day with an unbroken fourth wicket partnership of 245 that had taken their side to 283 for three which left them only 57 runs behind their opponents and that deficit was reduced to 33 in the first 50 minutes of the day. The partnership between these two eventually moving on to 269. After 82 overs of trying, Somerset finally broke through as Evans, having moved from 130 overnight to 138, was LBW to a relieved Peter Trigo. And that wicket altered the course of this contest. 19 runs later, Tim Ambrose was hit on the bat leg by Alfonso Thomas to go LBW for 12. And just three balls later, Ricky Clark was cruelly run out backing up as Thomas got a fingertip on a firm drive from Javid. That was the kind of luck Somerset wanted. Their bowlers kept things really tight all morning as well, with this being a rare boundary from Javid, who took his time at the crease to seven hours. He was out just after lunch as Dockrell took over with the ball. The Irishman had Javid taken behind for a career-best 133, with the lead for Warwickshire standing at only 14. 16 runs later, Dockrell then snuck one through Keith Barker to have him stumped by Craig Keyswetter for five. Darren Maddy, in a rare appearance this summer in place of Chris Wokes, tried to keep things going, but in truth, his side had lost their advantage by now, as this worn pitch finally showed some signs of helping out the bowlers, especially Dockrell. He claimed the sixth five-wicket haul of his career by having Tom Milnes held at mid-on. And after Jitan Patel had had a bit of a thrash to take the total into the 400s, Dockrell had him stumped well by Keyswetter for figures of 6 for 96, as Warwickshire were dismissed for 407 for a lead of 67 on first innings. They'd lost their last seven wickets for 100 runs, which perhaps showed signs that batting was now not going to be that easy. But instead, Marcus Truscothic and Compton batted with authority, as the tables really began to be turned in this match. The mood around the visiting camp had been boosted with the news that Compton had agreed to sign a new deal at Somerset, finally ending the rumours that he was on his way back to London. That was just the kind of news that can pick up a struggling team, and Compton's timing could not have been much better. He and Truscothic had reduced the deficit to only 12 by the time that T arrived. They then took their side into the lead, still with no wickets down, and it wasn't until 28 runs were on the board that Truscothic, on 27, again edged Patel to slip. Compton looked to be a freed man with his future secured. It has been a turbulent summer for him after the joys of last year, but he did at least get to a fine 50 here. It had taken him 86 balls to get there, from which he'd struck seven quality boundaries. There was a fault shot from him as he got a thin edge off Maddy behind, but one which was too tough for Ambrose to hold on to, standing up to the stumps. That, though, was a rare moment for Compton, who otherwise turned the clock back 12 months or so with a mightily impressive knock on one his side so desperately needed. Somerset may still not win the game from here, but this was, overall, one of their better days this summer. There was a blip just before the close as Chris Jones ran himself out coming back for a third, which the way he ran the first two was probably not intended. As it turned out, he was well short when Clark sent in the throw from the deep and Jones had to go for 16. But Compton lives to fight another day and will return to the crease on the final morning on 83 out of his side's 133 for two. That now gives them a lead of 66, which doesn't really give them enough right now to really push on for a result. The morning session on day four will be an important one for Somerset.